Behind the Shades. My name is Andrew, and I have a podcast called Anonymous Andrew Podcast. And this podcast was spawned, I created it a little less than a year ago because of a relationship I was in, and that's how Terrain and I met. He had heard my story about this relationship with a woman that was living a double life, so we don't have to rehash that. It's in... It's actually a couple of episodes ago on your podcast, uh, my story. Um, but however, so that was recorded, I think, six to eight months ago, something like that. And at the time of that recording, I was a very bitter and angry man, broken. This woman had, uh, I, I have to bring a little bit of the story into this update she was cheating on me and she was seeing other men and and there was some indication that she was doing adult entertainment stuff uh and unbeknownst to me although i had i had some intuition i had some feelings that there was something going on and every time i confronted her i was gaslit i was double talked i was told that i was crazy so you know you can listen to my story on on terrain's podcast or Listen to what I'm my, my whole first season is all about that the relationship. And at that time, I literally felt yeah, I, I this woman was beautiful. I, I I was madly in love with her. I really thought that we were going somewhere. Uh I was living in a fantasy world. There's an expression that you fall in love with the potential version of somebody, and that's exactly what I did. I there was a there was a version of her that I made up in my mind that I thought she could become and that we could become and that we could ride off into the sunset. And she had a whole complete different narrative in her head. And somehow she stuck into the it hung in the relationship for two and a half years. And so did I. And all the all, all the while I was privy to what's going on i'm like i knew she was up to something so when the whole thing ended i i I was angry at myself i was ashamed i was embarrassed uh, because i had brought my my friends and my support group into into the scenario and telling them and everybody was telling me i don't understand why you're staying and why why don't you leave well you don't understand she's beautiful and never find anybody as beautiful as her Uh, For the audience, I'm 63 years old, and when you get up there, and I'm by no means saying 63 is old, but it's the golden years. I'm a rookie in the golden years. I really didn't think that I would find love again. I, 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 it, it just didn't. My heart was broken. She, she literally, I felt like she ripped the heart out of me and stomped on it. Anyway, so I start this podcast to research gaslighting and narcissism and deception and all that. And I have to tell you, and and thank you, Terrain, because Terrain had heard my story and invited me on and we talked about it. But over the past six months, maybe seven or so, I have been doing a lot of work on myself. I, well... Well, the story I just told you was all about her, what she did to me. Poor me, poor me, you know, cheating and yada, yada. What role did I play in that? Because it takes two. In a relationship, there's two people. And while the other person might be responsible for their actions and what they do, was it something that I was doing that pushed her to do that? Anyway, so I reflected and I and another thing was that my my whole life, when one relationship ended, I jumped into another one without taking five minutes to to take a step back and and look at my life. And again, another thing that which I'm very open about, I'm an alcoholic in recovery. So a lot of my life 
there was a lot of drugs and alcohol involved. And, and so I never had a very meaningful, sustainable relationship with anybody, including my marriage. I was married many, many years ago, 30 something years ago. This time, during when I started the podcast, I I not only needed to grieve and process what happened, but I needed to stay single and I needed to take a deep dive into what role did I play and how did it happen and how can I prevent it from happening again? And of course my podcast is, is my journey of, of all the healing process and the grief and then all that stuff. And now I'm in my second season and I'm, I'm now I'm ready. And I never thought I, I did a, an episode a couple of days ago where I told my audience that I am now ready. I am happy. I am content. I am joyful. Being single, sitting in my own skin. Terrain, I, for years and years and years, I, I could not be alone. I, I had to have a woman at my side. It was, and I don't know, some psychologists could tell us what, what, what that's all about. But there were times that I, I couldn't look in the mirror. I didn't like what I saw. Today, I am in a completely different place. I am so happy when I wake up in the morning. I, I put my two feet on the ground. I thank God for another day. And um, I have been looking for... I'm I'm starting the process now of of getting ready to go start dating again. Um, as many of you may know, the term cupping season. We're in cupping season. Cupping season is the right before the holidays, like right Thanksgiving, December, Christmas, and then January. The cupping season is when many single people go out and look for their partner, uh, because what's right around the corner from Christmas and, and New Year's Eve, Valentine's Day is right around that corner. So I don't I didn't come up with that term. It's been a term for a while. Um, I even had to look it up to understand what it meant. So I, I'm one of those people that are I'll probably go through the holiday single, and that's fine. I'm happy with that. What what I really found out in this past year of being single was that it's okay to be single. I, I don't need somebody next to me. I would like to have somebody. And then I I discovered that there's this term between want and need. Do I need a woman or do I want a woman? Do I want a partner or do I need a partner? And I had to make a decision as to which one of those because it's very important as, as to between need and want. And uh, I don't, today, I don't need a partner. I am very capable of, you know, with all those relationships, especially the last one, my whole day and week was uh, catered around her. You know, what time we would talk in the morning, what time we would talk at night. Uh, the the food that I bought at the grocery store because she was coming over for the weekend, I would, you know, it, it was all centered around her. And that's not healthy. And I, I finally, it took time. You know, when they say time heals all wounds, it absolutely does. Because when I spoke to you six months ago, I, if, I even listened to the recording. I, I could hear it in my voice. I was bitter. I was angry. I was resentful. I was, uh, thank God I wasn't revengeful because I'm not a, I'm not that type of person. But today, I, I, I'm, today's Sunday. It's a, a little bit of a chilly day, but I was up at, 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 Six o'clock this morning, I played tennis at eight o'clock. At ten o'clock, I I came back, took a shower, and I and I met up with my my. I have three three children, three adult boys, and I picked up my youngest one. And we hung out this afternoon, and learning 
by the way, another thing that I found out that having a woman or a partner in your life that you're so obsessed with, so ingrained with, so OC, whatever, you you tend to block out the other people in your life, your friends, your support system, your family. I have three grown boys of which what, the oldest is married and has two of my grandchildren. And I dismissed all of them while I was with this woman because my life revolved around this woman. Today, I can... I can pick up the phone and call my any one of my sons, although one lives in Florida, but I can pick up the phone and say, Hey, what are you doing this weekend? What do you, can I come out and see the grandkids or like the son today? Can we get together and just grab a hamburger or a shake shack or something, whatever. And it's a beautiful thing. And I want, I, I thank you for come, letting me come back on the show because I want to have the message to your audience and to people that if a relationship ends, it's not the end of the world. And I thought it was. You and know? Andrew, if I can add to that as well, I think many of us have been there where we're in a relationship and because we spent so much time with that person, we forget who we are. And because we spent so much time with that person, we seem to neglect what we used to do, our hobbies, our friends, our family, all these things that look small when we're in the relationship, but when we're outside of it are so grand, such as children, as you mentioned, tennis, as you mentioned. I remember a time where I was in a relationship and I was so gun ho I was so into it. I was like, this is the person that I want to give my 110% in. But then what I found is that I was giving so much of myself that I didn't have anything left over to give back to myself. So my question for you is, as you look back and you compare the two Andrews, one from when we first spoke and the one from who I'm speaking to now, what is one of the big differences that you see? Well, almost everything you just mentioned and, and and more is I have the first thing that comes to my mind is I have that freedom of when I get up in the morning I don't the first thing that I I don't think of is somebody else like oh I so what time do I call her I usually call her on the way to work uh, I'm we're gonna talk tonight or this weekend I have to buy the tickets for the concert we're going to. the single lifestyle you really gives you that freedom to come and go as you please. You don't have to answer to anybody. In a relationship, a healthy relationship, you can still be involved with that person and make plans and plan your day, your week, your vacation, whatever, with them and around them but you're still an individual single person. And, and if you give each other that space, well, I never did that. I would crowd the woman. I would, I would be like, I need you. I need you. I need you. So the biggest difference that I, I see in myself today is that I am I, I, just, for example, today I woke up and I did what I wanted to do. And I was, I did a, this whole weekend, for example, I, got a lot done and going back to what you said about we we neglect some of the things in our life i have i've i have hobbies that i forgot about terrain i make candles all right it's a hobby that i my dad taught me and back then we made like regular candles for the for like easter dinner or whatever like the taper candles but many many years ago i got involved with making these molded candles and it's something that I enjoy doing. It's a creative craft. I, I I forgot doing that. So today I spent, after my son went home, I spent the last two hours making candles again, which is something that I enjoy. I put on a podcast or I put on some music and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm creating, I'm crafting. Uh, uh, so I, I hope that answers your question. You, you find yourself again, you find who you are and, it's not dependent on somebody else's day or their answer or what they want to do. 
And let me know when you want to get to the good part about my dating. Because <laughs> I am Absolutely. now. Okay. So No, because I'll say something, Andrew. Everything that you shared, if this is not the good part, I can't wait to get to the good part. Because what you're sharing is very insightful. And allows us to see the contrast of the different people. Because post-relationship, after the breakup, that's where many of us skip over the self-reflection. The healing, which is so important, right? Like we would go from relationship to relationship, carrying off that luggage, that baggage of the sins of the other person. I'll give you an example. Many times where when I'm dating, if I come out of a relationship, I probably spend a few months in between my relationships. But then one day I sat back and I said, Terrain, your relationships aren't working. The approach you have to them aren't yep. getting you what you want. The end result is the same. It ends, it ends, and you're left confused and wanting. So I had to do a lot of self-reflection to understand that I am the only constant in an equation that has so many variables because each woman is different, uh, but I'm, this, I'm still the same me. And then once I had an honest conversation with myself, I said, okay, this is where I went wrong. This is where I went wrong. And this is what I did to contribute to the breakup because some of us will be arrogant and say that, oh, all these women are crazy and all these yep. men are deadbeats. We blame yep. everyone else because mm -hmm. it's easier to shift the blame. So when you said that you're moving forward now and you mentioned the quote unquote good parts, what are some of the things that are working for you during your now new dating experience? First, I want to, just to comment on what you said. So if you break and end a relationship and go on to the next one and then do it again, 18 months later, that's, we call that the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. And you have to break that pattern. And I just broke that pattern. Uh, so what am I doing for myself? So I, one of the things that, in my podcast, at the end of my podcast, each episode, I ask people, if you're in a dating relationship or or you're in a situation where you need to, you, let's say you're dating somebody and, and they want to commit, you're dating for six weeks, two months, and the, and the commitment, like, do you want to be exclusive? That conversation comes up. What I have found is that one should sit down. Let's say, let's say, Say you're a woman and we're dating and we have this conversation about, I'd like to be exclusive with you. Instead of knee jerk reaction and, and saying, I would love that. Stop. And say, can I think about that for a day or two? And then go home and, and make a list of pros and cons or uh, th this might work for me, but come up with something for yourself where you, look close your eyes and look into the future and say can you imagine myself with this person are there any red flags are there any green what are the green flags you know we talk about red flags in relationships one of the things that i was taught during this past year was look for some of the green flags there are some good people out there and when you've been burnt and hurt so many times you're so cautious going into the next relationship that you're looking for those red flags. Oh, she said this, or she did that, or or you're analyzing words in a text message, and you're looking, you're looking for anything that you could say, oh, red flag. No. I I I used to say that my I have to say this carefully. I used to say that my picker was broken. Not my pecker, but my picker. My picker was broken. My picking women. And it was. I was picking the wrong women. I was picking women that were that did have emotional issues, trauma, PTSD, childhood issues, because I was wearing the Superman cape. Today I am now more focused on me. And if I meet somebody, I'm not so quick to to jump into a relationship or even dating get to know that you know when we go on dating apps and we meet somebody 
they are complete strangers. And even though you talk for 10 days and then maybe you go on two or three dates, you don't know that person. They are complete strangers to you. Especially in my age, when you meet somebody like 50 or 60, they have a lifetime of drama and and divorces and or maybe some good things too. But I'm looking for the green flags as well as the red flags, and I'm taking my time and I'm I'm the way I go about looking for love today is completely different than the way it used to be. So as you're sharing that, Andrew, and you mentioned the green flags, and I think that is very important because there are times where we don't look for the positivity in a relationship. We look for the negativity. And I remember sharing uh, a conversation with someone where anytime if I ask someone what they want when I'm coaching um, some of the women that I coach, instead of me asking what they want, because it's always easier to say what you don't want. So I said, okay, what is it that you don't want out of a relationship? And you're absolutely right. Like from a male perspective, I found myself and I found my my other male friends that they always felt that it was their job to save or build up or repair the person they're looking to date. And I'm sure that many women probably feel that same way. But as men, we want to enter a relationship complete and we want as possible. And we want to make sure that she is as complete as possible. If things come up in the relationship, things come up. But we shouldn't search for the most damage of women because then the question is, why are we doing that? Do we see some of the trauma that she has in us? And are we projecting that? Because are we? sometimes we'll go in a situation trying to save someone because we think saving someone's going to save ourselves, right? I, I, I think... Whatever generation that you're brought up in, it's ingrained in us in the movies, in fairy tale stories, like just just uh, Sleeping Beauty, I think it is, or one of those Disney World where the where the prince kisses the princess. You know, he's saving her. He's she's sleeping and she can't wake up. But you know, it's we're brought up to to be to to to, to rescue the damsel in distress. And while that makes a nice fairy tale story or it makes a nice rom-com or it makes a nice movie, it's not realistic. It, it's, I want to find somebody who's complete, who's whole, who has their life together. And, and I am the same too. I want them to know that my life is in order, that, that I, everything from finances to emotional stability, uh, family stability you know one of the first things i do when i meet a woman today is I, i'm right up front and open i'm telling them I'm, I'm an alcoholic in recovery no surprises you know uh you know but i always i i'm 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 not i have nine years sobriety so it's not a big deal to me but they need to know that um uh, but but yeah no we don't i it, no more no more superman syndrome no more rescuing it's it's me meeting in the middle and, and then the, the other thing i heard well i i heard a lot of things in this last year it th there used to be this thing like in a relationship you give 50 percent and i give 50 percent. no from what i understand is i give 100 percent, you give 100 percent. it's not 50 50 makes 100 it's 100 and 100 makes 200 forget the math but the idea is that you are a complete person and and you have all your sh your shit together and that that's the kind of person that I'm looking for today everything's intact and I don't have to come in and deal with the drama uh, of of ex-husbands or or alcoholic or children who are I have a son up in prison upstate or I, I you know when, when I start hearing things like that I'm I'm I can move on to the next one um, because I've dealt with that my whole life. I had a, a, my last girlfriend, her, her son was a heroin addict and I spent months and months and months trying to get him into rehab and uh, no more, uh, you know, it's time to, 
maybe when I'm 20 or 30 years old, I have time for that. But at my age, I, I don't know how many years I have left on, on earth here. I, I, I'm, I'm, I've spent a lifetime trying to fix me. I, I don't want to get into a relationship and then spend the next 20 years fixing her. So yeah, find, find somebody. That's why I, I say, choose, fix your picker. <laughs> find before you choose somebody, sit back and think, take a day. If somebody asks you to commit and you feel, and you feel it, but don't be so quick to answer. Take a step back and say, can I get back to you on that? You know? Uh, so that's what's let me, Yeah, let me ask you now. So when you're expressing yourself and you began to identify what you didn't want, what is what are some of the traits in a woman that you're looking for now? Wow, this is going to sound... I, when I saw this on people's profiles, I would roll my eyes. I was looking at women's profiles and they would say, don't even contact me if you're not financially stable, if you aren't, if you have any kind of ex-husband or ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend lingering around. And they would l have a laundry list of deal breakers. And I would roll my eyes and go, oh. you know, and, and I would just say, that's not for me. Now I understand why they say that, because what I'm looking for in somebody, and again, it could be an age thing or, or generation thing. I want somebody who is complete. There's, they, they, they have, well, I'll give you an example. I am talking to somebody right now on a dating app. And she checks all the boxes, you know, so we all have a list of she I, I maybe not all the boxes, but a majority of them. Um, and I, I cannot I'm looking for the I'm, by habit. I'm looking for the red flags. I cannot find one red flag. I see a woman who is a. Uh, she's an accountant, and she owns her own home. Her ex, uh, not ex-husband. See, I almost said it. Her last husband died of cancer, and that was about three years ago. Now she's just processing. Uh, she's finished processing the death and grieving, and now she wants to get out there and 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 find love again. And I thought that was beautiful when she told me her husband passed away. By the way, she lost two husbands, so. 30 years ago, she lost the first one and then she lost the second one. And I, I felt like horrible for this woman. But the point is, is she's complete. She's got her own home. She she's uh, we even have the same dreams and aspirations about where we want to retire. But I can't find one red flag in this woman. Now, I'm not saying that we're, we're this is the one I'm going to choose. I've made a promise to myself that when I start dating again, I'm going to mul date multiple women. If I choose the first one that comes along, that's not, that's what I, that's the pattern that I've been doing all my life. It's just the next one that came along. So while this, this woman that I'm talking to, I'm, I'm enjoying the conversation and she checks all the boxes. Doesn't mean she's right for me. And Do you think it's wise for you to date this many people at this point in your life? That's a very, very good question. It has been suggested to me that I do that by some life coaches. And my my answer to that is I don't know if I have the time. So dating multiple women could take months until you settle down with one, until you pick one of them. But terrain, this is this is where the freedom of being single and the freedom of, of healing is that I don't have to make that decision right now. This woman that I'm talking to. 
we're going to meet in a week or two after the, the holidays mess everything up sometimes. So we're going to wait to after the holidays. And on the first date, if we want a second date and it looks good and, but, but just this morning, no, 20 minutes ago before I went on the air with you, I got another like on, um, by the way, I got to tell you something. Facebook has got this dating app and it's free. And I've had more success on Facebook's dating app than all the other apps combined that I paid thousands of dollars for over the past year. Anyway, I did, I'm not plugging Facebook, but just for those, I just want to let you know that Facebook, I got a like, another like today. And I had a conversation with this other woman, beautiful. And she lives in the next town over. And, and so I have to decide, do I want to engage this one as well? So to answer your question, I, I don't know if it's wise for me to d date multiple women, but I don't have to make that decision today. I, um, you know, I, I'll take a little bit for my, my, my 12 step program one day at a time. Uh, today I'm talking to this woman and, but I just started a new conversation with somebody else. Let's see where that goes. Um, I don't have to make a decision today. I can, and I and I do believe firmly in in a higher power, and the universe has my back. And whatever plan He has for me, I'm gonna let Him choose. One of the worst things that you can do is take control, take back your control. That's one of the things they teach us in the twelve steps: is to turn it over. When we start trying to control our own life and control our destiny, that's when everything gets messed up. So I am one day at a time waking up and, and going about my day and how it unfolds. And some my higher power just threw another woman in my path today. I don't know if it'll work out, but I mean, if we'll even continue texting or talking, but I'd like to see see where it goes that's a good approach yeah. because one thing that i try to share with others is that no one can tell no one can tell you that you're ready until you feel that you're ready and then once you feel that you're ready you have to know that you're ready and if you have women raining from the heavens <laughs> <laughs> then you might as well just pick one and say okay let me do this with whomever but if you want to take it slow the best advice i can give anyone is look in the mirror, ask yourself the following questions. Are you ready to be what that person wants you to be? And if you can't answer the question, yes, then you have a problem. If you answer the question, yes, then the next question would be, can you deliver what you believe they will need from you? Because remember, when we go into a relationship, it's not necessarily it's about us. Because if it was about us, you just stay single, right? You wake up when you right. want, you eat yeah. when you want, you shower when you want, you wipe your ass when you want. There's all these different things, right? But once you get into a relationship, you're building for that person with that person and for the future. So when you say that you're going to date multiple women, I think that is a fine approach because you may not be ready to settle down with one because of your past. And that is perfectly fine because you don't want to give an incomplete version of yourself to someone because would you want an incomplete no. woman to be presented to you? No. And I don't. And while I tell you that this woman that I'm talking to is stable and she checks all the boxes and I see a lot of green flags, the other woman that I just came into my life, she might be as good or better. And so going back to, to the picker, maybe it's not up to me to pick. Maybe one of them will pick me. Maybe one of them will approach me. And and so, so that goes back to I am not making any decisions. I, I, I'm, I'm going to let my higher power and the universe guide me in, into this next chapter of my life. And what does that next chapter of your life look like for you? That's thank you. I don't know. What are you asking me what I would like it to look like or what do I, I build it I, for I, me? The 
scenario that I had in my head, the at the beginning of our conversation, I talked to you about a, the potential version of this woman that I was in a relationship with in my head was getting up on a Saturday morning and both going for a jog or both doing getting up and doing yoga together and making breakfast for each other or I make breakfast for her or uh, we jump in the car and go upstate New York and pick apples, uh, a companion. I want to share my life with somebody, the good, the bad, and the ugly, because as, as much as we can be in control of our life and try to be healthy and mentally healthy and physically healthy, life life comes along and throws you a shit curveball. So um, uh, just take a look at this woman. She lost two husbands in a lifetime. I mean, I, what, what, what are the... She said to me, what did I do wrong? <laughs> I said, I don't know. But um, I would like a companion to share my life with and ultimately settle down for people who are getting on in their years when health issues kick in or like I need some surgery on my hip. I need a hip replacement. And I've had one done already but I need the next one done within the next year. It's a lot of work when you come home. It's a lot of rehab. And while they'll send rehab or you can go to rehab, you need somebody at home to help you get, get in and out of bed, get in and out of the bathroom, get whatever. Um, I, 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 you need, well, I have family that might be willing to come over to do that. I can't expect them to do it 24 seven. They have jobs, they have family, they have kids. Um, but my, my partner, can do that you know so i'm just giving a small example of like as we get older we can depend on our partners you know when you get married what is one of the vows in sickness and in health you know and <laughs> in my age in in sickness comes into play uh, I, I hope to live a healthy long another 20 25 years where i don't need extra care but those are the things that I have to think about at my age. You know, when you're th younger, younger people may not have to think about things like that. But that's where I'm at. I have to think, will this next person in my life be able or will I be able to help to help them if, if God forbid something, they come down with something. So but what it looks like for me is. romantic bliss sharing cold evenings uh walks on the beach I, I i hate to be cliche but i spent this whole past summer alone and it was horrible because i i'm a big beach person uh this woman i'm talking to lives three blocks from the beach you know so that's one of those boxes that i check off she's a beach person and she lives by the beach <laughs> Uh, she wants to go to Florida. I want to go to Florida when I retire. So she checks off that box. So what I'm looking for is I, I have a mental list of, of boxes. And I think the next person that I pick, whoever checks the most boxes wins. <laughs> That's, That's how it should be. be. It's like a prize, right? And we are the prize. And I know that gets used so often that, you know what? I am the prize. I am the table. But it's absolutely the way it's supposed to be when we have a checklist, because I have a checklist. So if I were to anytime I meet a young lady and I say that I'm interested and we go on a couple of dates, there's an analyzing um, element to what we how we're interacting from the conversation to the mannerisms, to the goals, things of that nature. And you go check, check, eh, X, check, check and so on. And I encourage everyone to do that because you don't want to go in a relationship blind. One of my friends, right. she um, she has she has a hard time recently because every time she comes home, she comes home to an empty house. So when her kids aren't there, she's starting to feel the loneliness. And in Canada and in America, the last three months out of the year and the first two months in the new year is all about relationships, especially family, right? Like you have Remembrance Day in Canada, Memorial Day in the States, you have Thanksgiving, you have the holiday season, which is very family themed and oriented. Yep. 
Correct. then you have January 1st, which is a celebration of the new year. It's a new you and you want to make all these stronger relationships. And then you have February where it's Valentine's Day. Who's that person that you want to give that rose to? And if you remember, Andrew, we spoke about it went from a physical rose to a proverbial one now, right? Correct. Yep. And there's many people who are trying to change the name of some of these holidays. Instead of Valentine's Day is Single Awareness Day. It's I'm single and I'm going to take myself out because I'm in love with myself. But the last five, the last three months out of the year and the first two of every year is all about that. And to hear that you have someone that you're communicating with or someone they're working towards, what are some of the steps that you're taking to build this to be more successful than your previous relationships? Well, it's interesting you said that. I didn't know that her two husbands, she lost two husbands. Within the first week of us chatting on this text, she literally, so I live by the beach and and the and the area where I lived is a little a bunch of little islands. And so I live on a little island and then you cross over a bridge and she lives on another island. But it's literally like, I, I, like I could throw a rock and, and come close to hitting her house. That's how close they are to each other. Um, oh, I lost my train of thought where I was going with that. Um, I, I oh, gosh, I was going somewhere with that. Um, I, I want someone close to me so we could be together. Uh, I don't want to travel long distances. Um, well, ask me your question again, because I think I, I'll, it'll come back to me. Absolutely. So how are you? So what steps are you taking to build this relationship to oh, be better okay, than your right. previous ones? Thank you. Okay. What well, I asked her if she would like to go to a Starbucks and meet because we're so close. And it was five days into our texting. And I said to her, hey, listen, we're so close. We're texting. Would you like to meet up for a uh, and, and this is exactly how I said it. We can go to Starbucks and have a tea or coffee. And in parentheses, I put or beverage of your choice. She came right back to me and said, I don't drink coffee. And I prefer if we didn't meet yet, I'm more comfortable staying on the app. So she established a boundary and she put the brakes on. And I, I didn't understand why until a couple of days later, then she told me she had lost two husbands. So while well, it's been three years since she lost her last husband, this is her first time on the dating scene in ever. Like she has not been on, she's been married all her life. So I have to respect her boundaries and be patient. So what am I doing to allow this to unfold naturally? I am, I'm in no rush. So if she w needs another two weeks before we meet at Starbucks, by the way, we haven't even spoken on the phone yet because I, I've also dropped a hint. Why don't we have a FaceTime or a phone conversation? And she didn't answer me. So at one time, I might've looked at that as a red flag, but like maybe she's not real. Maybe she's catfishing me. But, but when I listened to the story about how she lost two men in her life, I don't want to say she's traumatized or has PTSD or anything. She's just not ready because this is all new for her. I have to look at it from her perspective. So that's what I'm doing to be more conscientious of the other person. It's all about me, you know, and, and going back to the beginning of our chat, I'm comfortable where I'm at. So I'm in no rush. So if she needs another couple of weeks, but in the meantime, I have this other woman that might want to meet at Starbucks. You see where I'm going? So I I have choices. I have options. I'd like this woman to come out and meet, but if she's has a fear of getting together too quickly or she might not trust me yet or doesn't know who I am, I have this other woman that I could start chatting up with. And, and I, I don't know that I'll let the other one go so quickly, but How do you feel about having these options available to you now? Well, you see, I was just going to say that all of a sudden now I'm overthinking. And and when we start overthinking, um, we all know that we have that inner voice. 
There was a coach I was talking to the other day. She calls it the dragon. There's a book by Michael Singer called The Untethered Soul. And he talks about that inner voice that's always chattering in our head. We have to quiet that voice sometimes because if we allow that voice to, to overtake, that's what meditation is all about, is to, to shut that voice down and just listen to your breathing. Uh, if I overthink that too much, Terrain, I will fuck it up. <laughs> to be bluntly honest with you. So she doesn't want to meet right now. That's okay. But, and I'll give her her space. And when she's ready, she'll come to me. But in the meantime, I'm going to, if if God and the universe puts another woman in my path, uh, I, I will take a look at her and I'll start talking to her. It's not because I don't want to be a player or a playboy or get laid. I, I, none of that's a, a, is even a, on my radar. I'm looking for the next Mrs. Anonymous Andrew. <laughs> so, uh, but I have to do it methodically and slowly and patiently and not overthink it. I think those are wise words, my friends, because we can overthink almost everything everything and especially when it comes to other people because we don't know what they're thinking and we don't necessarily know their intentions we can have an educated guess but sometimes we're building it as we fly it we're like i think she likes me but i'm just going to continue to go along and then you know it turns into something totally the opposite of what we expect but then yep. you also have the other side right it turns into something completely amazing and that's where you get your ROI, the return on investment, because the risk can be great many times, but the reward is always greater because when it's good, it is really good. So, Andrew, what would you recommend for or at least advice you want to give to someone or men out there who are struggling to understand what they want, who went through a similar journey that you did? but they're trying to figure it out and find success like you're potentially about to as well. Well, the, first, the very first thing that I would do is if, if you're jumping from relationship to relationship, like the frog in a pond from a lily pad to a lily pad to it, stop, take some time off. And, and I don't mean a month. I don't mean three months. I mean, six months to a year, stay single and, and find out who you are. And what you want in life. And then while you're doing that, you can, in my case, listen to many, many, many podcasts. There, there's some very wonderful podcasts out there like yours and, and others. Uh, do find a dating coach or a life coach or work with a therapist or somebody to, to work on yourself and quiet that inner inner voice because I, not I, it's not unique just to you or me that i think a lot of us overthink we over analyze overthink and to the other to the person that you might be talking to give them the benefit of the doubt of course you have to be careful today we got romance scams and catfishing and all that stuff i, I get all that but when i asked this woman to go to starbucks and she said no Initially, a year ago, I would have said, forget this, uh, you know. But then when I found out two days later, it was all about, you know, she just lost two husbands in, in 30 years. I, 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 It made sense to me. It said, okay, she needs more time. And I don't think she's a damsel in distress. She's not traumatic. She, she's ready to start dating, but she's doing it at her pace. And that's okay. And that's okay. So my advice to the men is just slow down, take some time. It, that's the, to the men who are looking for romance and, and relationships. Of course, there's the other side of the men out there who are looking for casual sex and hookups. So I, I'm assuming we're talking to the men looking for lovers and, and, and marriage and all that. Take your time and and, and and I I truly believe this statement. When I first heard it, I rolled my eyes again. I I'm not big on cliches, but you hear them all the time or sayings. Stop looking so hard, and when you stop looking, it's when you're gonna find it. 
or something. The phrase goes like that. And and I believe that's absolutely true. When you start, when you over aggressively look for something, it, just take an example. If you lost something in your house and you take days and you're looking through drawers and closets and under the pillows and uh, the couch, if, if you stop looking for it, you're going to find it. And that happened to me today. Um, I, I lost something about a week ago that I bought online and I was using it for a couple of days. It was, it uh, doesn't matter what it was. And I, 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 I couldn't find it. I took two days. To look, Do you know what? I did my laundry today and it fell out in the laundry machine. I was doing my laundry and there it was. So just a perfect example. I stopped looking for it about a week ago and I, it came, it came back to me. So stop trying so hard. Thank <laughs> you.